you're watching Two Lips Swift. Welcome to the last day of the Booktubeathon. I'm so excited to talk to you about my favorite book in the whole world, The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. Where do I start? Okay, so I saw this movie when it came out. When did it come out? Let's see. It says copyright 2012 Summon Entertainment. So we're just gonna call it 2012. Let's take us back to that year. I have been a Taylor Swift fan for less than two years, but you know, a very vulnerable time for me. Um, like all of the fandoms I got into that I'm still into, like Taylor Swift, Paramore, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Skins. I mean, I think at this time I was, this was like, I would say the height of my Logan Lerman face. That's this boy right here. Steven Chbosky's voice is like, a rocket in that film and you like hear him through every line through every shot and I was like whoa this is the voice I've been waiting for like I feel so valid and understood and this is such a serious story and so much fun and all the things I love about teen movies and all the things I've always wanted in a teen movie and I love it so very much. I'd never related to something more as like the panic attacks and the way he doesn't feel okay but he can't describe it but he knows exactly what to say at the same time. And then I would say probably 2014 or 2015 I picked up Lay Book. So I read the book and I realized that this is so much bigger than some teen movie with hot people. Along those lines I found out that he was the one who directed the movie and that's why I felt it so strongly in the film and that he wrote the screenplay and it means so much to him and it meant so much to me. Back then I was like there's absolutely nothing like this book and there never will be again and I still feel that way. I wanted things to like define me back then and I mean I still do and I was like this is it this is my favorite book for the rest of my life and now it makes me sad because I'm older than Charlie I'm older than Sam and Patrick but at the same time Stephen wasn't a kid when he wrote this you know he was looking back he's like an artist he's a filmmaker and a few years ago I finally watched the director's commentary go to behind the scenes audio commentary on play movie it changed my life and I've listened to that a few times I'm hesitant to press play on it now because I know how much it affects me and it kind of like puts me in a mood for the rest of the day but I'm just having that open dialogue between I think Emma, Ezra, and Logan are on it with Steven and just talking about what the movie meant to them, how they bonded on set, and then of course Steven goes on and on about how serious this was and how he felt like he was like filming his childhood and um, he just wanted to be heard and he wanted to like reach out to young adults and he said he wishes he had someone telling him that he was okay back then and he felt like he was so lost so he goes on a whole spiel like while the credits roll about how much he loves everyone and he wants everyone to feel okay and he never felt that when he was charlie's age so but i haven't really talked about the book have i i've talked about steven a lot because i stand steven i stand Ch steven chbosky um as entertainment weekly said the film deserved an oscar nomination whatever it's beyond us the kind of like the freshmen becoming friends with like the craziest seniors someone comes in and it's they seem to like save you from like what you're going through or in Charlie's case in this new place. Just having like friends that you care about so much that you love so much that you can't even express to them that and you know that's I love that about this book. I mean there's a lot of you know Tumblr, We Are Infinite. I'm not into that side of perks. I mean that was a thing for a little bit but um, there are more important quotes in the book and I hope you take the time to read it and read about Steven. When I read the book I was like yeah that's what I'm trying to say. Just the little tangents he goes on. The way it's written in stream of consciousness I had never experienced before when I read Catcher in the Rye a few years later I was in love with it. And I think this is why there's something so freeing about how it just feels like I've been let into someone's head and I'm not just reading their book I'm reading their life and it's his day to day. There's something so casual about it but something so serious about all the things they go through. He wrote this book really to like heal himself and then it turned into he really wanted people to know you're not alone. All right that's all I'm gonna talk about. Also Ezra Miller is my whole entire life. I love him so much. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Bye.